Hey everyone, this is Zephyr, and welcome to the Bailiwiki channel, where we teach everyday DMs how to create truly amazing experiences for their players by combining art and technology. Today, we are back automating Foundry with Monk's active Tau triggers and using an incredibly powerful but often underutilized feature called Handlebar Expressions. First, we'll cover what exactly handlebar expressions are, and we'll dive into a few different examples for you to use in your tile setups and for your games. To demonstrate what handlebar expressions are and exactly what they can offer us, we have a really simple demo right here. This tile, when we click on it, is going to say that it was triggered by Game Master while controlling Acra. If I switch over to player three here and click on the tile while still controlling Acra, it's not gonna update and say that it was triggered by player three. Then if back on GM, I grab Eustace here, it's gonna say triggered by GM and controlling Eustace the Undying. So how is this happening? It's clearly some dynamic information. And that is where these handlebar expressions come into play. You'll notice in this chat message, we have the user.name and token.name phrases wrapped in double curly brackets or handlebars or mustaches, however you'd like to refer to them. If you're familiar with coding, you may recognize handlebar expressions from things like JavaScript and front-end development for web applications. If not, don't worry, using them with MATT is super easy. These are basically a collection of phrases of information that MATT automatically stores and passes on to actions within MATT and some other forms. Here on the wiki, you can check out the full list of handlebar expressions and also some of the syntax and common actions that leverage them. We'll have this page linked in the description down below so you can use it as a handy reference whenever you're diving into handlebar expressions yourself. Now for our first demonstration, we've got our buddy Eustace the Undying here, and he's going to go ahead and step on this active tile. And he's shouting out different phrases here every time he steps on this. And we are again leveraging handlebar expressions, but this time we're picking up a different kind of dynamic information. If we go into our triggers, this is a standard on enter tile and everything. And then in actions, we have a roll table and we have it just named phrases and we're just grabbing one result from it. I'll go ahead and grab that to show you now. And you can see we just have a variety of different text entries here, and that's important for the next phase. Our chat message is going to be this value.text.0. So this is taking the value of the text array and taking the very first entry, because we start counting it zero in coding, and then it's going to put that into the chat message. So Whenever we're rolling and then we're using this value of text immediately afterwards, it's going to give us the results that were rolled. So that text result there, and then that's going to be our token bubble. And so we can use that in order to have these kind of dynamic random speeches. And you can tie this to a variety of things. Maybe instead this tile triggers at the beginning of a combat round and it's going to have a very specific token. Maybe it's a phrase from the bad guy as he takes his layer action or something like that. You can also use these roll tables to do different things. Like maybe this is a way to randomly go to different landings for you, or similarly find other ways to leverage some random text for you in your action flow. For our next demonstration, we're again gonna leverage some text here, but we're gonna do it with this treasure chest. This opens a dialogue where we have to enter the password or passphrase to open up this chest. But we'll notice that there was a section of what was our last guess. And now this area instead of being blank says like. The last guess was like. So we're actually storing whatever the previous guesses were. And then when we say the correct thing, it tells us what we guessed as well. So we are successfully guessing a passphrase and able to check what the last thing guessed was. Opening the tile, we have our standard on collect tile. And then our actions, we have a few different landings here. And the very first action is going to be a show dialogue. It's gonna be a confirm, the ID doesn't really matter, and we're gonna have a custom HTML text down here below, and it's gonna open for the triggering player. Now within this HTML, don't get too intimidated, we'll have this available as well. It is a simple form where we are going to basically create that input, that text input, and we're naming it password. This is important because this is the value of that input that we're gonna pass along later. And then we also have that section for the last guess was variable dot last guess. So we're gonna establish that variable later on and come back to it to filter it back into this dialogue. Now notice that on yes, we go to the handlebar expression of the value dot password. So that's where we're getting that input from earlier, that name password we're passing into value dot and then the name of whatever we named our input 
value.password. It's going to take that and it's going to take us to the landing that matches the value of password. So it's not going to go to password. It's going to go to whatever the user has put in, whoever triggered this tile has put in for that input. So if they put in like, it's going to try to find the landing named like. And in this case, if they were to put in like, it would go to the wrong landing and we'd go to the failed landing state. But on a yes with the correct thing, then we'd go to our password setup. So right here, you can see our landing that says subscribe. That is our correct guess. And then the other landing, the failed landing, is where you're going to go if you put in anything but subscribe. So we're going to go through that first. The very first thing we have here is check value. And this is going to search for password. Remember that handlebar expression that was value.password? We can also just put in password and check it here. And what we want to check for here is we have the not equal to blank, basically. It's just two quotation marks indicating that it's an empty string. And if there isn't something in there, so for example, if it's if it's got content in it, we're going to continue going. But if it is blank, we're going to go to the blank landing down at the bottom. Assuming that there was some content, the next thing we're going to do is set the, an active tiles variable. If we go and open that in, this is where we're creating that variable of last guess. And we're storing the value as value.password. So we can use that handlebar expression to pass the value of password onto the value of the variable last guess. And that is coming back up into our show dialog where we mention the last guess. And then we just have a chat message letting people know that it failed. We have this blank landing down here because if the password is blank, if no one entered anything there, then we don't want to overwrite what the last guess was. Someone probably clicked on it and decided, oh, I'm not going to actually take a guess and close out. You don't want them to lose that information of what the last guess was, so that's why that blank is there. Now, let's go back up to our, our successful landing here. So subscribe, that is going to be the password that you're using, and this is case sensitive. So when you enter in the dialog what your password is, it needs to match the landing exactly. So for this setup, using subscribe with a capital S or all caps wouldn't work. You have to make it all lowercase. Once someone's put in the correct password, it'll take them to this landing, and then we're going to Again, set the active tile variable of last guess to the value of the password, just so that we can keep calling it back in. And then we're gonna have our success message and we're gonna use the variable dot last guess here. And this allows us to, all we have to change is the landing of what the password is, rather than having to change the landing and the chat message. It's just a little easier for us whenever we're making changes. Now, if you wanted to make this case insensitive, so either way you had subscribed, you could do a few different things here. You could do a filter on the variable or the value of password in order to uh, change it. We can instead go to a landing that's going to check for the value of password or the value of last guess to then see if it is either the capitalized or the lowercase version. But what I think is the easiest is if we just duplicate the landing of our password and we make an uppercase version of it. So in this case, subscribe with a capital S. And then we just add a jump to landing action down here in our action flow. And then we just put in the name of the correct password. So you can use that as a much faster way to add kind of alternate spellings or alternate capitalizations if you want this to be a little bit more of a generalized password. This is a really cool technique and one that I think is probably the most likely to be used in your average home game. This is a great puzzle of someone clicks on a door or a locked container and they have to enter the passphrase in order to continue on. Or you could hook this up to say you need to have a passphrase to get into a location, to get past a bouncer, etc. So this is a really cool way to add this in. You can add multiple password storage. There's a lot of different customization options that you have here and it's a really fun one. And our last demonstration is going to be something a little bit more complicated. We're going to be using our landing pages modules, complex landing page version 2.0. So here you'll notice if I click on journals and I click on characters, there are these buttons that have different functions depending upon which one I've clicked. And then again, you can see that this is the same button. As I move it around, it is the same button. There's not two tiles here that I'm stacking on top of each other and hiding and showing them differently. This also shows differently for different players. So player one has a different experience than me as the GM when I'm clicking on this. So how we do this, if we go into our actions, we can see the very first thing we do is we check this variable and it's got the handlebar expression of user.name hyphen state. So this lets you know that you can combine handlebar expressions in a compound manner. It doesn't have to just be a handlebar expression 
and then that's it for your variable name. You can then do a handlebar expression and add additional modifiers to make dynamic variables. And this is where the power of handlebar expressions really goes crazy. You can do a lot of cool things with this by adding things like that. So you can make things happen or track per token or per user or per trigger method by adding in these handlebar expressions. We can see after we check that, we go down and we check to see what these different states are to see whether we're going into the journal workflow or the character workflow based on the mode that this button is in. And if it's not in the right state, we just cancel out and we don't do anything. So how do we know what this variable is? Well, if you go to your setup and you click view variables, you don't have to have history on, you can click view variables and you can see we have game master state is set to one and player one state is set to two. So we are seeing in real time that these two different users have two different variables. So that user.name hyphen state is dynamically calculated based on who is triggering things. And then if we look into the buttons over here to the side, we're triggering these UI elements and sending them to a specific landing. And within those landings is where we are actually modifying those states. So you can see the journal mode landing here is setting the variable to user.name hyphen state. And this is where whoever is triggering this, that user, it's creating a new variable that is their name hyphen state and then setting it to that value and that is what we are looking at when we're going through these different processes and keeping them separate. Now, there's other ways you can handle this as well. For example, we're doing check variables here. You could also create a jump to landing here. And just like we did in that last example where we jumped to that value.password, we can do the user.name hyphen state, and then we could go to the landing that actually matched that. If that were the case, we'd want to change this instead of being one dash journal, we'd want to change it to one and two, or in that journal mode and actor mode, we want to change the values of the variable that we're setting there to instead of being one and two, being one dash journal, two dash character, and make sure we're turning them into strings. But you can use that to jump to specific landings that way. We just really like having the all of the organization and the visual reminders of how these work. Either way you want to do this, this is a really powerful way to leverage handlebar expressions and variables that allow you to get incredibly complex with your Monk's Active Tile Trigger actions and create some really awesome experiences for your players. And that's going to conclude this episode of Automating Foundry. I hope that this has shown you some really cool examples of how to use handlebar expressions and given you a few ideas on how you might start to bring them to your own Monk's Active Tile Triggers game. In the comments, let us know what are you going to leverage these for, what crazy ideas do you have, and what you'd like to see us automate next. Once again, this has been Zephyr with the BaileyWiki channel. If you enjoyed this video, then subscribe to keep up with all of our latest content, and consider becoming a patron. Not only do you support the channel, but you also gain access to all the modular systems and scenes that we've ever made, including our landing pages module. Once again, it's been Zephyr. Thank you so much for watching. Happy gaming, and have a good one.